Hey, welcome back to another episode from Life of Living Well. My name is Richard and I hope you are well this week. Before I start the podcast for this week, I quickly want to say if you are new to this podcast, uh, we welcome you. And if you'd like to know more about what this community does, you can check out us on our website at www.lifeforlivingwell.com or www.lifeforlivingwell.info. You can also send an email if you like to know more about this community. It's info at lifeforlivingwell.com or info at life for living dot info or you can write directly to me as Richard dot at life for living dot com so let's get started uh probably the podcast for this week is going to be short brief and direct it's just the uh, podcast that come for the essay that I wrote in the f- past few days And it's also going to be a blog on our community website. Uh, The topic I have for you this week, I call it immeasurable richness. All all measurable richness. So uh, it's not, it is the way that you have, that the bank can define that this is what you want. That's measurable. There's also a way that you already have or you have and you don't know yet or you're working towards too this is what I call all measurable words and it's still wet and only when you lack in this thing or you don't have it then you realize how valuable it is for your life and most people find out so late in their life what they took for granted I always remember the story of a of a guy that owned a plot of land, but it never seemed the land was a month for anything. But one day a priest came to him and told him about amazing opportunity in a distant and foreign land where they are just finding gold diamond everywhere. So what did he, what does what did he do? So he sold up the land and he packed his bag and he traveled to a distant land to find the diamond. So the chap that he sold this land to, you all most I'm sure most people will have know the story I'm trying to start the podcast with. But the person that he sold the land to, one day was walking around the garden of the land and he saw a glittering in the water. And he looked at it, he didn't know what it meant. So the same priest came, as usually do, to visit the land, uh, to visit the farm occasionally. And the new owner of the land told the priest about strange thing that you find in the stream of the river that passed through between the land. And the king said, and the, and the priest said, that's a diamond. So they started digging and they found a lot of diamond. So what I'm trying to say is that sometimes when you take your eyes away from what you already have, it's difficult to attract the new better thing to your life. Because you don't appreciate what you already have, you're bound to actually lose it or somebody else that appreciates it more than you will take it away from you. So don't fall into that trap. So don't just think like the only way you can, you only know about is the way that you can put value to. So the purpose of this podcast today is what I call all measurable richness. The richness that is abundant is there, but you can't really measure it. You can only feel it, experience it, share it, and the, everyone that come around you or your contact also benefit from it okay in our society today generally many people see and equate richness only to money because it's the only thing that they can say that they have 
and it's only to have in numbers. So the number of so-so amount of money is what you equivalent your merchandise. This view is very limited and that is why we have many issues in our life that we tend to struggle with it and and sometimes this issue in other area where we can put we can put any measure to it our struggle just play out that we don't have a control by it we let it control us and and the more we try the same thing the more we get the same result so how do we get out of this rat hole? And it's more to do with our mindset and our behavior to change that. So if you have a mindset of poor mindset about money, you probably struggle to keep or create or attract money to your life. If you have a mindset, poor mindset about it, the same thing. If you have a poor mindset about happiness, that your happiness is only based on something outside of you all the time. So when those things are no longer available to you there, it means you cannot be happy. So this is where this podcast is trying to take you to, to sit down and look into the amazing richness that you can amass into your life and then transpose you to review the measurable richness that you actually focus on. Gandhi once said, Art provides enough to satisfy every man's needs, but not every man great. And this is time also into, because we live in a society that most people struggle between what they need and what they want. And sometimes what you need and your, what you want might actually interwoven with each other. But majority of the time, they are so separate. But because the conditions that individual race or the conditions, the environment prepare them to think and reason and do things, they tend to invest all of their energy into want only. And this cannot make you happy. It can distract you, it can give you momentary joy, but it will not be the reason why you feel alive. But nevertheless, you see a lot of people they end up by a house that they only live there for one day or two days or one week in a year. So why? Because they spend a lot of time hiking, they lot of time travel, a lot of time be on the mountain, a lot of time do things. That is what they actually need. Chasing and drilling is something that they really want. But they end up by a massive places. Just everybody buy just to show what richness they are and this is really sad that if you are comfortable to just be on caravan and happy with it be it if you are happy to stay in three bedroom house and you're happy with it stay in if you're happy to stay in a massive country house and you're happy to stay with it stay in so but the question is how do you separate what you did and what you want and what you want most of the time are dictated to you from the outside of you. What you need only come when you're quiet in your mind, in your soul, and you be within yourself. So what you need will reveal yourself. So in fact, Napoleon he book, Thinking and Grow Rich, place money into number 12 out of metric of richness out of out of things that you use to measure how somebody how much somebody is rich uh it's not just money money is the least of the 12 time stone that limestone that you needed to reach in order to consider being rich so in this particular podcast my aim is to illustrate some of the other trait of unmeasurable richness that society had ignored. It is surprising today to see a list celebrity taking their own life despite the status they have amazed because of their career, the fame they enjoy and, and then they still end up losing their own life 
it's really sad when you see things this way. But I'm employee that before you judge these people, in case one or two people will have known someone in this similar situation, but because you are not there, it's incredibly lonely on that top. So, your fame, your status may not be enough to reveal how much you fulfill as an individual. So, the question I ask you today is, how do you continue to invest into your unmeasurable richness? So many people today may ask, could you do that without knowing what is it? So you can, you are someone, how will you continue to invest into your own measurable richness? The question is, how do I do that without really know what exactly or measurable richness? And that's what I wanted to touch briefly on this podcast. And hopefully I can expand it on it in the, in the future. If I, if the time permit me to do so. Number one, these are the, I put the five things that you should use to gauge your unmeasurable richness if you already have it in your life or if you're working toward it. And this is thing that will help you to know that your life is already rich and it can only bring out the quantified richness then the world define you how much you want this is my list of unmeasurable richness it's my personal list you can define your own list yourself number one loveliness loveliness we only do one or two things in your life it will allow you to accept your beauty your beauty is unique it doesn't need to have a standardized way. It doesn't need it to be accepted by anyone. It firstly needed to be accepted by you. When you accepted by you, other will accept it. So your beauty could be your physical beauty, could be your character, could be your sense of humor. It could be anything of you. So, but firstly, you need to embrace it. You need to accept it. You need to smile it. You need to feel it. You need to live with it. You need to drink with it. You need to sleep with it. You need to wake up with it. You need to embrace your own beauty. And your own beauty can never or mean will never be a standardized for everyone. Confucius stated, everything has its beauty, but not everyone says it. So the only one that should see your beauty first is you. So when you wake up in the morning, appreciate how much beautiful you are as a person. How much beautiful you are for being here. You do not need to do or offer anything before you become beauty. You are beautiful already. Number two, that you quantify someone that has reached this state is their inner peace. Inner peace, not in a passive way, not in detached way, is more to do with living simply. Your life becomes simply. You no longer are boring a threat in your mind. Something trouble you, you're able to confront it, you're able to resolve it, and if you cannot resolve it, you're able to let it go. And this is where the inner peace comes from. Because Buddha once said, do not seek the peace outside first when you don't have the peace within yourself. So ensure that within you, you already amalgate a more peace in your own heart. Because the once your heart is peaceful, you are bound to tap into creativity to unleash a new ideas, unleash a new product, unleash a new creativity to solve your current challenges. It's amazing how when people are so troubled and worried and they tend to make a worry decision and because of panic and fear, they even make the situation that is worse, even more worse because they were unable to 
able to took the right uh, the right path because of the panic and they just press the panic button at the same time. Number three is self-reliance. This one is always different from everyone, but it tends to sh- show its fruit in the same way, regardless of your culture or your color. I will suggest if you have spare time, read the essay of Ralph Waldo Emerson about self-reliance. This essay is so rich in the content and the thoughts and the visions of the Ralph Waldo Emerson. And if you find it online to read it, you will not regret it. Number four, abundant mindset. So it's similar to number one. So abundant mindset is, is like you no longer restricted yourself to the job your parent did or your grandfather did or the job you are doing or the title you are. So I'm a young, I am a teacher, I am a doctor. You are more than that. That, that labeling is part of who you are right now, but it's just a little of bigger picture. So, after a band that man said, it will only open the door or help you to make an art of moving from one scarcity to abundant. You begin to believe that you can change your situation. You begin to set a goal and make the goals happen because your mindset will change your attitude. As, as man thinking, it began. So what you think is what you become. So your mindset have to change firstly. Uh, I once know, I was myself in the past learning wanted to swim. And the swimming teacher told me that I cannot swim. Why? Because of my, uh, my, my particular uh, call, my particular race, and which is wrong at the time. And thank goodness that I didn't listen to her. So what did I do? I didn't change my goal to learn how to swim. I changed the person that teaching me to achieve that goals. So sometimes the challenges comes. It doesn't mean that you should abandon your goal, but you should be prepared to change the process while you want to achieve that goals. And sometimes process is more important than the goal itself because the goal will not transform you to what you become but the process that you went through will change you eventually. And that's what we should always focus our attention to. So I trained the teacher, I did change my goal, and I was able to swim three weeks after I was a different teacher. So your mindset, if you have a mindset that you cannot do it and you be with somebody that tell you that you cannot do it, it is very difficult to do it. So you have to surround yourself you begin to attract people that share the same sunlight, the same energy like you. And if you find yourself stuck in the wrong place, you have enough enough energy, enough passion to change that situation. So you no longer become a victim in, the, in any situation you find yourself. So you realize that you are also a co-creator where you can make things happen for you. If it's a positive experience you want to experience, you can create that at the same time. Always focus on what you are first. So with abundant mindset, you don't start looking for what you don't have. You do the you do the auditing, what you already have. You appreciate that and then you begin. If you want to start a business and you don't have the money, do you have the time? Do you have the knowledge? Can you collaborate with somebody else? If you, are you happy to start small or you have opportunity to go big? So all these things will come to you, but you always have something. Uh, every time I ask someone, say, what do you work into? They want to create a mega business, but they don't even have a hundred pounds. So they can't even buy a, a domain name for 20 pounds or $20. So you ask yourself, what do you really have? And they said they don't have anything. And it's really sad until you sat them down and you go through their career, their experience, the thing that they've done, helping the neighbor, helping their friend, helping the family. And then you realize that they're already doing the basement, but they are not making any income from it because they didn't say that they solving any problem and their mindset was actually working against them. 
And this is when their eyes open and they, they realize that they already have what they need to start. So having an abundant mindset, we create amazing opportunity. And this kind of mindset, this is can be you can't really say somebody worth this because of their mindset, but you can see what their mindset produces in their life. In time in the area of X, in their area of relationship that they have with themselves, with their friends, with their family, with their partners, with their business, in the with their colleagues. You can see with the money they create, with the investment they make, these are the things that you say abundant mindset generate. So the the result you see is just the surface. You need to go deep, deep, deep down to see what is behind that fruit that you can see outside. Many have given up an opportunity that's so near them because they were overly focused on opportunity that are not yet in their life. So remember when I started this podcast this today, I talk about the story of a farmer that had a land that was full of diamond, but he didn't really realize that he already had the diamond he was looking for. But he saw it as if he, he was distracted with the news of a diamond in order in a strange land. And because it's a strange land, it must be better than what you already are. And that is not true. So what did he do? He saw the land cheap and he makes a big time in opportunity. And the last one, before I round up this podcast, is acceptance. So there's no way you will have unmeasurable richness without embrace acceptance into your life. So what I mean by that is that you have to confront any experiences like a champion. You cannot just choose a particular experience above the others because they are all the same. And I'm sorry to tell you this, they are all the same. So the good experience and, the, and what you consider as a bad experience, because all this experience will balance themselves up in your life eventually. You'll be able to know how to swim different current when that time comes to your life. So, and to get to the stage of acceptance, you no longer see yourself as a victim. You see yourself like the, you develop a wisdom to know a situation that you have a control on and the situation that you don't have a control on and you know how to let go the one you don't have a control on rather than wasting your resources and your time and your emotion and your feelings to want to fix it. So you confront any experiences like a champion. The more of it you expose yourself to, the better your discernment you will become. So, and this is very crucial. So always remember this. If you wanted to know how to measure, how to measuring or measurable richness, look for five this five elements in yourself or others. The loveliness, the inner peace, self-reliance, abundant mindset, and acceptance. So to run this up, your education, status, family, or network would not guarantee this kind of richness. Your education, status, family, network may guarantee a measurable richness, but to experience a measurable richness, it doesn't guarantee if you have all those things in in your life. Most of the time, a measurable richness may open the floodgate for measurable richness. So what you see in people's life is what people say. You see the money, you see the wealth, you see the status. But what you don't see is a measurable richness that actually prepared them to make that happen in their life. So most of the time, it's the fruit of their unmeasurable richness that show this side in their life. So I hope I'm going to bring this podcast to the end now. And I hope this particular podcast helps someone this week. Whatever you do, please stay safe. And see you again next week. Thank you.